Silencer Central is best known for its sporting suppressors for hunting and recreational shooting. But recently, they partnered with Federal Premium Ammunition on the Speed K. This is designed for law enforcement and military use, and of course, civilians. You know, we were approached by Federal, you know, typically people Federal Premium Ammunition came to us and said, we see the market for um, AR-specific uh, suppressors to be an area of opportunity. Honestly, at first, I thought, you know, this isn't really probably our market. Like, I don't, you know, I, I intentionally, at first I was like, okay, typically what Silencer Central brings to the table is our compliance acumen, our business acumen. Uh, a lot of times we focused on uh, super quiet, super lightweight, um, this felt a little different, you know, less blowback and, you know, they weren't really sure what size they wanted. So a lot of things that I was thinking law enforcement, we don't really have any relationships with them. And I, I was a little like on the fence and my team's like, okay, um, it's federal ammunition. You have to work with these guys. So, um, you know, we said, yeah, you know, Jason Vandenbrink was kind of the CEO that pounded the table and said, if it's not the best product, we're not selling it. So you've got to go figure it out. So. On the flight back, that's basically what I told Lucas. And Silencer Central's got to find a way to deliver a product that not only wows and impresses the customer, but also, you know, does a good job for federal because they're going to hold us accountable, which is good. It's a good position to be in. Some of the biggest things are is they wanted something that was um, very compact that they could maneuver easily in and out of cars in, in buildings, um, and so that's kind of what how we developed the overall sizing of it. Um, but then a lot of big things was the blowback of it. Um, so a lot of other suppressors um, that they're using today have high blowback and um, just that gas particulate in, the, in their face while they're, while they're firing, either training or on duty, um, was really uncomfortable for them. Um, and then sound was another thing, you know, looking at um, long-term hear hearing damage within um, the law enforcement community and how, how many rounds they do fire on a typical year, uh, that was a big consideration. Blank sheet of paper, we had kind of our top 10 items that we wanted to address within the design of the Speed K. Um, looking at those, we had, had ranked them in terms of what was most important to the law enforcement community um, so that we can, if we had to give and take anything within the design um, and development of it, we knew exactly um, where we wanted to pull those strings. Um, and then it really went into putting together some different concepts. So um, started uh, really analyzing the design itself. Um, we kind of knew we wanted a short, compact body. Um, but from there, we didn't really know what direction we wanted to go at first. Um, so it was kind of interesting. We, we started looking at um, the blowback and sound performance and how we were going to achieve that and determined that we really wanted to look at 3D printing um, as opposed to traditional uh, machining on the, on the silencer. And the reason being so is you can do a lot of different and very interesting um, geometries within the silencer that you can't do normally um, just through traditional machining. And so you're able to had different cavities, different um, flow channels for the air to go um, to achieve some of that reduced blowback and reduced uh, noise suppression. It really depends on the department. You'll have some SWAT teams that really have some high-end stuff to some really small towns that have just a factory Colt um, AR 16 inch. And so that Speed K was designed that doesn't matter what that department has, if they're throwing it on, it's just something stock, um, kind of more of your basic AR platform, it's gonna run great. If they've got um, the ability to tune it with a gas block or some other things or they have upgrades, it's gonna be maybe a little bit better, um, but really regardless of the, the AR platform the department's running, it's gonna work on all those. Trying to develop something that will um, reduce that and mitigate that back pressure, um, but still have optimal sound performance. Um, and so sound and back pressure um, are kind of counterintuitive in silencer design. Um, typically, if you want it quieter, you, you also end up creating more back pressure. Um, so it was a really um, exciting and interesting project to see how can we reduce both of them at the same time and find a good uh, balance between them. I think it's probably opened some um, opportunities for us for people to see us in a different light because they probably thought of us more as just a dealer or just, you know, hey, those are the guys that are licensed in 42 states at the military front door. So they thought of us in that perspective. So to bring this other dimension to Silencer Central, we feel like it's been a great benefit for us. There's plenty more story to tell with Silencer Central here in South Dakota when we come back. So what happens if you want a suppressor but don't have a rifle with a threaded barrel? 
Silence Essential has you covered with their 360 system. You go online and just go to their menu and they make it as easy as possible. You input some data, they send you a mailing envelope, and then a qualified gunsmith receives your rifle, disassembles it, chucks it up in a CNC lathe, makes sure everything is fine, and it goes back to you at a very affordable price. Any barrel that a customer purchases for barrel threading, uh, we'll get them brought in. If we have to disassemble the gun, we'll get it ready, prepped for threading. So we want to make sure we're concentric. So when we're putting it into our CNC, we'll get it chucked up. We're not going to have that barrel hang out 10, 20 inches out. We're going to have it tucked in within a few inches outside of the, the chuck. Then we'll also have a crown saver, which we'll use a tail sock. So instead of having one side just trying to hold it centered, we'll have two points of contact. So when you do go into our barrel threading tab to purchase a 360, it's laid out simple. It's rifle make, rifle model, serial number, caliber, do I need threading service? And then four options for additional services you need. If you need to add in another rifle, there's a button there that says add second rifle. And you get all that information filled out, you hit pay, $39.99 plus tax. We get it packaged up, shipped to your door. I mean, it's, it's an easy system. It's pretty, pretty foolproof that we got it down. You know, we don't want to see that barrel coming back for a warranty issue. We don't want to see their can coming back for a warranty issue. We're making sure they're getting 100% job coming from us the first time. Silencer Central has a pretty diverse line of suppressors. Regardless of whatever you need a suppressor for, there's probably one in their complete line that's gonna work for you, whether it's for a 22 rimfire dedicated, whether it's for the 223 or 556. The Banish 30 is a pretty much do-it-all silencer, and they go all the way up to the 338 Banish. There's also a 46 for those of you that want one for your 4570. So the Banish line, really its inception when our owner Brandon Maddox started that was something that was gonna cover a variety of calibers that was gonna give you good sound reduction and it was gonna be lighter. When that original line started, it was very heavy steel, not very quiet suppressors were kind of abundant in the space. So it was kind of a new thing there with the titanium. It was significantly lighter, hunters really enjoyed that. And it was quieter than a lot of um, the, the suppressors out there. And then it just kind of started with that Banish 30, um, was kind of the flagship. Um, and then obviously there's more caliber range out there. And so it was just adding additional suppressors yearly or every other year to just fit, fit more hunters needs. What caliber, what ammunition um, a silencer is gonna be on when you go into the design process um, and look at what are, what are some of the cartridge pressures, the velocities that it's gonna see. And that really dictates um, how the silencer needs to be designed. If you're looking at lower velocity um, use cases, uh, you're gonna design that that baffle structure and that silencer differently um, to handle the low pressure, lower velocity um, in a different way than you would, uh, say, a high velocity, high powered rifle. Yeah, that Banish 30 has a lot of versatility to it. Um, for someone that does want to cover a whole range of calibers, it is unique that it is serviceable. Not that necessarily that's a huge deal if you're just going to have it on one bolt action hunting rifle for its lifetime. But for the people that do a variety of shooting, they're putting it on gas guns and they do want to maybe shoot rimfire through it. You can take it apart and clean it, which is cool. The versatility too and the modularity. Um, maybe you're at the range and you want it to be the full nine inch length and get top end sound reduction. You can do that. Now you're going on a big game hunt, got a little bit longer barrel and you want to make it a little shorter. You can take two inches off, save a couple ounces, shorten up and still be hearing safe in that shorter configuration. Yeah, so looking at a suppressor design, it all comes down to um, what you're going to be using it for. What's the end use? Um, what's the firearm? What's the ammunition that it's going to be used for? Uh, but then what you're really trying to do is you're trying to slow down and remove the energy from that high velocity uh, muzzle blast that's coming out of the, the firearm. Um, so within any silencer, it's made up of, of different style baffles. Um, there's multiple styles out there, but they all have these, the same effective use. Um, you're trying to slow that air down, um, reduce that energy and uh, influence how it's exiting the end of the suppressor. Having an engineering team to look at the designs and say, okay, um, I think we could make it this way, it'd be more efficient, it would be stronger, and we could also scale it better. That's good to have someone at the table that could bring that insight to you. Because before it was a, hey, can you help us design the perfect product? Now it's how do you help us fine tune in the manufacturing of the perfect product? So understanding what somebody's doing, whether they're hunting, 
range shooting, doing precision long range, or just recreational shooting, um, or a variety of all of it, and kind of narrow down what the best option is going to be for them, whether that's one suppressor to cover a lot, or one suppressor to cover a few, maybe a rimfire suppressor, a pistol suppressor, just to give them the best performance and, and user you know, experience.